In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this beautiful Dory fish. So this always reminds me of Finding Dory or Finding Nemo. I'm a huge Disney fan, so I can't wait to get stuck straight into showing you how I painted this lovely fish. I've been wanting to paint one of these for a while, and it's quite simple to do, so if you're a beginner, I do tempt you to have a go at this. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial that you can follow along with. I'll leave the line drawing in the description box below, so you can go and print that off, and then you can trace over it, and you can use that to follow along with me. If you're going to just watch me paint today and enjoy the process, then grab a drink and let's get started. The colours I'll be using today are lemon yellow. Then I'll be using some cadmium yellow and I'm only going to use a little bit on top of the lemon yellow a little bit later on in the fish's tail. I've got ultramarine blue and also indigo and we're going to use indigo for the darkest tones. So there is only four colours in this. We are going to mix some of these colours together to get different colours. I'm also going to be using some dioxazine violet and I'm going to be using the smallest amount of this. I found this gorgeous reference photo of a blue tang fish on Pixabay. So this is a royalty free website where you can find lots of free images to use. A lot of people know this fish as a dory and I definitely do being a massive Disney fan. I'm going to be starting off with a sketch of my fish and this is quite a simple sketch. So I'll be using this sketching pencil. It's a non photo blue pencil by Karen Dash. I'll leave a link to this pencil down below for you but you can just use a regular pencil. I've got lots of regular pencils that I use. This one's a really good one. It's a Rotrin Tiki and it's a mechanical pencil. So this is a hard lead pencil and it's a really nice pencil to work with. So I will link this down below as well because I use this all the time. You'll also need an eraser and this one is just a Stadler eraser that I got from a stationery shop. We're going to start off by looking at the outline of the fish. Have a look at the outline shape of the fish. I'm going to start off by using my pencil on its side like this, just so that I can roughly sort of figure out where I want the top of the fish to be. So I'm just going to draw the length of the fish and his back fin coming down. So we've got that back fin coming down and it comes down like this. We've got a bit of a tail area going on. Now the back of his body, so I'm just going to bring this up a little bit thinner on the top. We're going to work on the inside patterns and shapes once we've put the outline in first. I'm roughly going to draw this in and then I'm going to take my Rotrin Tiki, my mechanical pencil. I'm going to press over it harder so you can see it better. So I'm hoping that you can actually see this. So I'm just looking at the outside shape of the fish. So that area there is the front of his face. I'm going to completely ignore the mouth for now. So I just want to get the rough shape of the fish to start with and also the proportions. So I'm not really concentrating on the wiggliness of the outside of the fish or the details for now. I'm just looking at the rough shape of the fish's body. So I'm trying to work out the edge of this tail here just so that I can bring that around and figure out how thin this is going to be here. It comes to about that width and then I'm just going to draw a line down to meet this here. And we're going to draw the tail in. So the tail comes out like this. Try not to think of how you would draw a fish. Just have a look at the shapes and draw what you see. I like to go from side to side and then fill in the middle shapes. So I'm going from this area here again. I'm figuring out where that stops. That stops to about there and it comes out. And then we're going to just draw in this rough tail shape. We are going to go back over this in a minute, so don't worry about that. That back fin is a bit tricky. I couldn't figure out if it had a little gap at the top, and I think it does. We're going to bring that out there, and we're just going to bring this down. I'm just trying to figure out where this fin starts and where it stops. Then we will draw in the actual shape afterwards. Right, now I need to figure out where the eye is going to be. Let me just zoom in a little bit for you. So I'm going from the top of this mouth area, the top of his face here, and I'm trying to figure out where that eye would be. So I think the top of the eye would be about there. And then coming from the top of his head, we're thinking about the edge of his eye would be about 
here so I'm just drawing these little guidelines to help me really and then the bottom of his eye thinking from the mouth this pointy part here coming up I'm just looking at the edge and trying to figure out how far down this edge the eye stops so I would say about middle middle way I'm just drawing that line across and then I'm going to figure out where the front of the eye stops so it looks like it stops about about here so I'm just going to draw this eye in here and you can see that I've actually brought this line a bit too far forward the reason why I'm using a non photo blue pencil is because they're very easy to erase so I'm going to show you now how easy they are to erase, so I'm just using the eraser on the end of the pencil and they're so lovely to work with, they are very soft I'm going to figure out where his gill would be and then where the fin would be so trying to figure out from the top across here, how far across the top would that fin start and looking at the gill as well to try and work that out so right here and that fin actually comes back a little bit so we're just going to get that rough shape in and the rough whereabouts of that fin as well just figuring out where that fin stops and starts so now I've got these details in I'm actually going to fix these details up so then I can put the markings in I'm going to actually fix up this gill area so I'm going to just fix it up the eye is a little bit more complicated than a round circle so I am going to fix this up so it's not a complete round circle it is actually a very odd shape just drawing in the outer edge of the eye that comes out a little bit so you've got an inner edge and then you've also got that inner pupil as well the fin is not just a straight shape you've actually got that dark edge there so I'm going to get that dark edge in first and with that fin there are frilly bits of that fin which I am going to avoid because I want to keep this tutorial nice and simple and then we're going to get that yellow area in as well so that yellow area actually comes a little bit higher than that blue and with the tail comes out I'm actually going to draw this tail a little bit longer because I don't think I've done it long enough especially on the edges so with the tail it is a little bit jagged or a little bit misshaped and it's quite pointy on the edges and then it's a bit more uneven on the top as well and then we've got that rounded part of the beginning of the tail coming down now with this yellow part I want to get that in as well so again that's nice and jagged but if I just draw it straight for now we can actually make it jagged with our paintbrush a bit later on some of that yellow comes into the body of the fish I'm actually going to try and fix up the front of this face now only because I can see now that this area here just needs to come a little bit higher I'm just going to bring that up a little bit higher and I'm going to bring this around and a bit higher up as well and then we're just going to start bringing the top of that fish up and then the fin goes like this and then it's quite wide on the bottom and comes a bit thinner on the top and then we can take this opportunity now to start drawing in the marking so that marking is uneven but it's a lovely marking and it's probably one of the most important parts of this fish because it actually shows that this is a blue tang and I get that marking on the front as well and then from the eye I'm just figuring out where that marking would go so have a look at your details and work out where you would need to put things within the fish that's how I work out where to place things I'll look at the outer edges and I'll look at the inner edges and the inner details as well 
So this is the best way that I find to actually sketch something, something out. And we're going to figure out where the bottom of this marking would go, so it's on the yellow area. And it comes around like this. And it actually joins up the bottom of the tail, the dark edge of the tail. Now we've got that circular edge, but just beware that there is a little bit of a cut off here. So if we go from the fin, from the top of the fin, or the main, or a little bit down from the top of the fin, we can draw in that circular, more of a rectangle really, or an oval shape, and come in back into the fin like that. Now I'm going to fix up the front of the fish's mouth. So it curves around a little bit at the front, and the mouth droops down. So if you draw the mouth down at an angle, and then it is not straight across, it actually is an angle again, a little bit. And if you have a look at the front of the mouth, it kind of cuts in. And then we're going to draw the bottom of his face, bulges out a little bit, and then bulges out a little bit again. <laughs> Can you see how the fish is not a complete oval or a complete one shape? It is a series of shapes and lines. There we go. And then at the bottom here, we've actually got this line here. I'm going to paint in the background now. So I'm going to mix in some dioxazine violet with the indigo. And we're going to get a lovely dark colour. So I'm going to try and keep as much water out of this as I can. So it has got a little bit of water in it to allow it to flow on the paper, but it's also got lots of pigment mixed into this. So I'm going to just apply this nice and dark to the paper and we're going to add some indigo as well to really darken it up. I'm just going to test that colour now. Right, so that's still purple. I do want it to be more of a grey colour, so I'm going to add a bit more of the indigo to this. This has got lots of indigo mixed into it now, so can you see it's a very dark purple colour, but it's almost blue tinted and grey as well. I'm also going to use my lemon yellow mixed with a little bit of the ultramarine blue to create a green shade for the background as well. So we're just going to take a tiny bit of the ultramarine and can you see how that makes a lovely sort of bright green? More of the blue. I'm going to get a little bit of a bright green going on in the background. We're going to start off with some clean water so I'm going to carefully paint around the fish I don't want any of this background colour going into the fish because I do want to keep the fish a nice bright blue colour. So I'm going to paint the water carefully around the fish. And if you're not very confident with painting water around the edges of objects, just leave a little gap. Once you've got your paint on your paintbrush, you can actually go up to the edge with your paint instead of just the water. Sometimes I do that because with water, sometimes you can't actually see if you're painting it over the edge of the object. So I'm just carefully painting up to the fish with some clean water all over, making sure the water's nice and even. This paper that I'm using today is Moulin de Roy, and I love this paper. It's a 100% cotton paper. It's A4 size, and it is £140 cold press paper. And now taking my size 12 brush, I'm just going to start dropping in some colours. I'm not going to be too careful about this because I do want that background colour to be really wishy-washy and out of focus. I am going to drop a little bit of ultramarine into this just to make that more of a turquoise colour but we're going to get the hints of green in the background too so when those two colours mix together they'll be more turquoise. I want to keep this colour in the background nice and light. Just these background flowers I'm going to keep nice and light because I do want them to be really out of focus and very muted so I'm going to use some dark design violet now and once this dries this will dry lighter as well so I'm just painting in a few of these coral shapes I'm leaving gaps because some of that is going to be covered with the dark color that we're going to put on in a minute so I'm just painting in a few dark shapes might actually drop a little bit of the green in there just to break it up a little bit and also some of the ultramarine just to break it up the colour a little bit, just in a few little areas really. And now taking a lot of my water out of my brush because I want to keep this colour nice and dark, I'm going to go in with this dark mixture. So I am going to bring that up to here first because I want those colours to merge into one another and blend in. 
So you can see that I'm sort of painting in between the gaps to try and make it look a little bit like coral. So we got the shapes of the coral there and the background then is this dark colour. So this would of course be the sea. So you can make it really sort of misshapen because coral is really misshapen anyway. And I'm going to carefully paint around the edge of the fish. If you're wondering what brush I'm using, this is a size 12 brush. It's a silver black velvet brush and I absolutely love it. It's one of my most used brushes because it holds lots of water. It covers large areas like this but then it also has a fine tip so I can get into small corners and gaps. So I'm going to continue to keep working on the wet paper. Just bringing some of that colour into the coral. You can take this opportunity to shape the coral a little bit. You want to work quite quickly when you're doing this as well because you don't want your paper drying on you. Parts of my paper is drying already, so paper does dry really quickly. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to get into this gap here. Just dipping my brush in my paint jar just to dilute the paint at the back here, just so it's a bit lighter. Now I've really diluted that paint, so I'm going to paint it on the bottom here. And I know that in the reference photo it is more of a grey or pink, but I am going to keep this nice and light. So I've really diluted this paint here. Painting it carefully along the bottom edge of the fish. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few hints of the Direct Design Violet in to this area just to make it look a bit more broken and a little bit more flecky. Just be a bit haphazard with this. I'm going to paint in a nice diluted wash of the lemon yellow now. So I'm going to just paint the middle of the tail and I'm just going to leave the outer edges free because I do want to cover those with blue and I don't want them to turn green so I do want to keep that yellow off that sort of outer edge and then I'm going to paint the lemon yellow on this top of the fin here as well so only on the top fin and while that's wet I'm going to start dropping in the cadmium yellow so I'm just going to drop the cadmium yellow onto parts of the fish's tail so just on the inner corners here where it's a bit darker and there's a little darker edge on the outside edge there as well. I'm going to allow that to dry now. Next I've got a watery mix of the ultramarine blue and I'm going to paint that all over the fish. So I'm going to start with the tail and don't worry if the blue starts going over to the edge of the yellow. This is exactly what I want because that edge of the yellow is very jagged and uneven where bits of the blue is going into that yellow area anyway so that's exactly what I want so I'm just using the tip of my brush this is a size 12 brush now so I'm going to paint over the whole of this fish with the ultramarine nice even layer of the ultramarine blue over the fins even over this middle area, but I am going to avoid this fin here, so don't paint over that area there. I'm keeping the edges nice and wet so they don't start drying, so we don't get an uneven wash. While that's still damp, I'm going to add a thicker mixture of the ultramarine now and I'm going to start dropping that into certain areas. So this has got more pigment mixed into it and less water, so it's slightly thicker and you want this paint to be thicker than your wash that's down on your paper so that you don't get any back rinse. And I'm just going to paint that over the edge of the fish. You can see that I'm accidentally painting onto the background of the fish, but don't, don't worry because we can go over that and fix that with a darker paint. 
it's because I'm using quite a large brush. If you're not very confident with a large brush, just use a smaller brush. I'm also going to paint this little area on the back here as well. And then a little bit on the back fin here. So this paper is still damp, so you're going to get softer edges. And I'm just using a damp brush just to blend that edge out. So make sure that you've only got a damp brush and not a wet brush. Otherwise you will add more water to the paper and you'll end up getting da uh, back rinse. So I've got a damp brush. I'm just blending out some of those edges to keep them nice and soft. I'm going to create a bit of a shadow underneath here. So you want to do this while the paint is still wet so that you're getting soft results. So there's a bit of a shadow underneath the fish. Well, painting in these darker shadows is going to give the fish a little bit of shape and form. A little bit underneath him as well because the underneath of the fish will be in shadow. I'm going to add a little bit around the bottom of his eye as well where we've got that lovely dark blue marking. Also around the back of the fin, you can see that my paper has started to dry. If that starts happening to you and your paper has started to dry, leave the paper to dry completely and then re-wet the paper because otherwise if you start working on this while your paper is still damp and it started to dry, you're going to get some really harsh marks and cauliflowers and this is exactly what I'm doing and it's only because I'm rushing trying to get this tutorial done for you because I need to get my kids from school. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't do what I'm doing. I want to wet the body of the fish now. I'm actually going to stay away from the fins because in a minute I'm going to be adding darker colour. So I'm just going to wet the body because I just wanted to add a little bit of shadow and definition to certain areas. So only wetting around the fin and then the bottom edge of the fish just to give him a little bit of a shadow there. I am actually going to wet his face area as well because I want to drop a little bit of darker colour into that. Now I've got my ultramarine again and I'm just going to drop in some more pigment here. This is still the same ultramarine blue that I've been using on the whole of the fish. But because we are layering up this colour, it's going to be naturally darker anyway. So I'm just dropping that into this area here. You can see that I accidentally went on to the outside edge of the fish. So I was just fixing that there. And then I'm going to paint that onto the bottom of his mouth as well. And then I'm going to add a small amount to the front of his face here and just let it bleed out into the water. Also a little bit underneath his fins. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of definition to his body area. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that colour into the middle of his body and leave the rest of it white, or light, sorry. I'm also going to pick up some of the pigmented ultramarine blue and I'm going to drop it around the edge of his fin here where it's quite dark and also onto this area here. I'm just going to blend these edges out a little bit because they are a little bit harsh. Maybe the paper was not wet enough. Next I'm going to take my rigger brush. This is a size 1 and it's a Princeton Neptune and I've got some slightly thicker ultramarine blue so this is watery but it's thicker, more like a milk consistency. Then I'm going to use my rigger to paint on some lines. So I'm going to start on the outer edge of the fin. I'm going to paint the dark markings on the fish now and because I do want this paint nice and dark, what I've done is I've mixed up this mixture and allowed it to dry. And then all I'm going to use is my wet brush to reactivate the paint. So we're not putting too much water into the paint. So I've got my size six brush now and I'm going to start painting on the dark markings. I'm going to start on the tail and I am going to leave a very small strip of the lighter blue and showing underneath on the very top of this tail. This is going to be a very thin strip so you're hardly going to see it but it is going to make a bit of a difference. So you've got that lighter strip then against the dark background and that's going to help to make the fish's tail stand out a bit more. So I'm just painting on this very dark marking on the tail. I'm going to take some of that dark marking into the yellow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm just going to run along the edge of this marking here just to try and coax some of this colour into the yellow just so we get a bit of an uneven line. I've got the dark paint again 
and I'm gonna again leave a little strip on the edge of this tail and also on the tip because if you have a look on the reference the very tip of that tail is a bit lighter you can see that I'm skipping a few little areas and that's just so that some of that light colour remains and shows through and I'm going to take my damp brush again and do exactly what we did with the other side just running it along and also on the tip here just to soften this edge I'm going to continue with this dark colour and I'm going to paint the whole of this dark marking in this dark colour I'm so sorry if you can hear anything in the background. For some reason there tends to be a helicopter always circling my house. <laughs> so I've at the moment got a helicopter circling my house and now an aeroplane as well. So my house is very noisy at the moment. You don't have to be very careful with this. The edges of this marking are slightly regular anyway. They're not completely straight so you can make it a little bit haphazard. Like I said, you can make the edges a bit more irregular so they look a bit more interesting because if you have a look at the reference photo, those edges are quite irregular, really, really I can never say that weird. I'm going to take my damp brush now and I'm just going to blend out some of those edges, just a few, not all of them, just to sort of break up the, the line and not make it look so harsh. And a little bit in here as well. To start wetting this fin now, so this is just some clean water going onto the paper, and then taking a watery mix of the cobalt blue, but it's slightly more pigmented than the first layer. I'm just running that along that fin there, so kind of at the top of the fin where the fin meets the body, and then we've got that dark blue mixture, which was the indigo and the cobalt blue mixed together, and I'm also running that over the edge of the fin, so I'm just running that along the ends really where my pencil marks are and then I'm just using the tip of my brush to sort of bring some of those um, like the fin patterns down so I'm just, <laughs> I'm not explaining this very well am I? I'm just using the tip of my brush to sort of bring some lines down to create this lovely textured pattern within the fins. I'm going to wet this top fin as well so just some clean water again and then I'm going to take my dark blue mixture and I'm going to run that over areas. I am going to make this little shadow at the top here so I'm just fixing that shadow and then I'm also going to run it along the top of the fin and I'm just allowing that to bleed down into the water because it's a nice thick mix it's not going to bleed too far anyway and then once that paper has dried a little bit I'm going to take some of these markings into the fin as well but because the paper is slightly damp, you are getting a bit of a soft feel. So you're getting more of a soft look and just using the tip of my brush. And I am putting quite a few of these little lines in. Now with a watery mix of that dark blue, so it's got lots of water mixed into it, it's very diluted. I'm gonna just run that over the eye area. So this is gonna be the first layer of the eye. I'm also going to add a dark mix of that blue to the front area here but I'm trying not to touch the eye because I don't want that dark mixture to bleed into that wet area of the eye that we just put down. I'm wetting the mouth area and then I'm going to take a very diluted wash of dioxazine violet and I'm running that along the lips so you can see that I'm leaving that little white area at the front now with a dark mix which has got a bit more water mixed into it so it's more of a mid-tone it's not as dark as the um, pattern around the fish or the fins either so it has got water mixed into it i'm just going to paint the outer edge of the eye and also the middle and then in the middle where the iris would be i did paint the cobalt blue so that was some of the cobalt blue going on and now i'm just going to paint onto the dry paper this gill so I just took a watery mix of cobalt blue and then I was just dropping in a dark mix of that dark blue that we had. So that was the indigo and the cobalt and then I dropped that onto the paper while the paper was still wet. I'm going to also paint this fin, I'm just painting onto the dry paper here. And this is the blue again. Um, 
I think I might have put a bit more of the cobalt blue into this so it's a bit more blue rather than an indigo but it has got water mixed into it so it's more of a mid-tone like I said it's not as dark as that middle dark patch I did want that area to be the darkest and then I was just painting on the details of that fin so I just made like a little triangle and then brought it down with the tip of my brush now I'm running the dark mixture around the outer edges of the eye and um, also in the middle of the pupil as well because I don't want that area to be nice and dark. The last thing I'm going to do is take my white pencil and if you're wondering what pencil I'm using this is by Karen Dash and it's a luminance pencil and I've got a really nice fine point. I will link my sharpener that I use as well because it's a really good sharpener and I'm just going to use this to create a few little highlights. So I'm just going to put one on top of the eye here. And then I'm going to just use the side of my pencil to shade at the very bottom of the fish in a few areas just to create that shininess on the fish. So if you have a look at the reference photo, it is a little bit lighter at the bottom here. So I'm just using the side of my brush just so that I can get a nice soft edge, a nice soft feel. And I'm just shading at the very bottom here. You can see that I've accidentally gone over the blue, but all I'm going to do is just use my finger or you could just go over that with a bit more blue paint. I'm going to use a little bit on the tail here, just a little bit, and maybe at the bottom there as well, and maybe a bit here in the middle, just to create a bit of a highlight there. You can also use your white pencil to fix up the mouth area if you want as well, if you've not put the mouth in correctly. And you can also use the white pencil to add a few little spots here and there, just to create a bit of fleckiness in the background which might suggest a bit of underwater flecks or creatures or bubbles. The last thing I'm going to do is cut my paper off my board and I don't use this method very often. I don't normally stretch my paper. I'm normally a little bit too lazy to do that. Here's my finished fish and I do really need to get better at cutting my paper off my board. Um, if you're wondering where I got my supplies from, I will link them all down below for you, for you to have a look at in my description box.